So for those wondering, I don't have a huge amount of experience appendix carrying, but I do have a little bit. I'm gonna move this little guy over here. So I don't have a huge amount of experience, admittedly, but I do have a little bit. I've been carrying appendix style, or trying to carry appendix style, since about October of last year. And when I started with appendix carry, I started with this big boy here. And you can already tell the difference, size difference. This thing is a little bit big, but overall, it definitely taught me a few things about appendix carry and what to appendix carry if you're looking for something comfortable. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the biggest thing when it comes to concealed carry as a whole, whether it's appendix or anything else, any other position, it's all about your body shape, your body size, and what you can put up with. Because admittedly, whenever you stick a gun down your pants, it's going to protrude onto your body, and it's going to probably feel uncomfortable in some position. Uh, at some point and there's a lot of factors that go into this though that can help alleviate or change that feeling so appendix carry is one of the more trickier carries at least in my opinion because you know it's smooth sailing for the first 10 minutes but you begin to realize after some time that there's a lot of organs that are right next to the appendix that really don't like to be bothered by the likes of a gun when you carry something say on the back right hip or the back left hip you know inside the waistband you're primarily going up against your hip bone which your hip bone really doesn't care about anything intruding on it so for the most part it's comfortable However, like I said, there are some organs around your appendix that are, don't feel the same way, so it can get really uncomfortable, particularly fast. So this was, like I said, my primary rig, and how I've concealed carried it appendix style hasn't changed too much, and honestly, I really don't enjoy concealed carrying this one appendix just because of the fact that two things. One, this handgun is a little bit big for my body frame, and two, I've learned that Kydex holsters are amazing in many ways, but appendix carry is not one of them. Something that I learned pretty, well, I would like to say pretty early on, but it took me a few months, is that whenever you do start to appendix carry, you want as much mobility as possible. And what, what, I, what do I mean by this? I mean that you want the ability for the gun, the holster, and everything to move as much as it possibly can. And obviously the firearm is going to do the least moving because it's a pretty stiff thing. However, you can do two things uh, that will help with the mobility of your firearm as you bend, as you sit down, as you twist your body, whatever, to pick something up do whatever you do as on your daily life. The first is that I would highly encourage if you are going to appendix carry, go to something like a leather belt. When I first started appendix carrying this gun, I was using a very rigid uh, duty belt that was made out of nylon webbing. And it was a great belt to support things off of. In fact, I love it for bushcrafting because it holds everything up pretty well. However, it's really bad for appendix carry because whenever you go to sit down, bend over, do anything, the gun is just an absolute stick right there. It does not bend, it doesn't move, it doesn't conform to the body at all. And therefore, when you go to bend down to pick something up, you get a really uncomfortable, you know, backslide just stabbing right up into your guts and your body will quickly let you know how much it doesn't want that to happen again. So the first thing is using a leather belt. The next thing that I would heavily encourage is the use of a leather holster. And once again, there's a certain degree of flexibility that it won't allow. Obviously, leather holsters, you know, even being leather, this stuff is pretty, pretty tough, pretty stiff, but you can see it does have some flex in it. And while reholstering out of a leather holster is not the easiest thing, the most important thing whenever it comes down to a self-protection handgun is being able to quickly and cleanly draw the handgun. And this will still definitely allow for that. So with those two pieces of equipment, a belt and a holster made out of leather, you're already two steps ahead. It allows your gun to be more flexible and conform to your body's movements more naturally and with less rigidity. The last thing I recommend is the size of the handgun. So like I said, this is my old appendix carry handgun and I still do carry it 
concealed sometimes, but primarily this is what I carry nowadays. And while it is certainly not much smaller than the, so certainly not much smaller than the P10C, uh, but you'll be surprised just how much of an impact just a couple inches can make really with your or even just a half inch, an inch, or even a couple inches can really make when you're concealed carrying. And for me, once again, this uh, this is a Springfield Range Officer Compact. It's not too much smaller than the CZ P10C, but it's just small enough that one, I don't have the handle sticking past my hips on my side. And secondly, it also isn't as bad whenever I bend over and try to pick something up because the frame isn't as high up. Now some may say you do have a beaver tail here and it is true though it doesn't stick much past what the CZ P10C would do but it also is much smoother. This right here may look painful and I thought it would be painful but it's actually really not that bad because like I said the Springfield's done a really good job at making sure that the actual contact point that you would hit when this is appendix carried, I'm sure they didn't envision appendix, but whenever you're concealed carrying it, the actual part you hit is right here. You don't actually hit this tip area there. So it does a really good job ultimately at not being obtrusive and being comfortable. So the last thing you want to consider that, that would affect appendix carry and would really affect all carry is the thickness. Now, once again, going back to appendix carry, it's a little bit more important for thickness just due to the fact that it's not so much that it's more visible, but that it's more felt on your body. The wider the piece of metal you're trying to jam into your pants, the more disruption it's going to cause to those organs that are all around your body. My recommendations are that you pay attention to your equipment, your holster, your belt. Try to go for something leather in those options so that allows the gun to have more flexibility. And with guns, consider the size of the gun, consider the width of the gun, and consider the parameters of your own body because th those are going to be the largest determining factors to use successfully and comfortably conceal carrying appendix style.